Greetings, my friends, and welcome back to TNO with Bobak Kennedy. So last time we began to stamp out the flames of hate, but we began down on the wall on poverty, in which we're still trying to do that. Even though I think now with this episode we're gonna try to do Law and Order, bind up our wounds, but especially finish off poverty and especially get down with the Social Security Act, which means we we'll probably have to go with the National Labor Relations Act. But regardless. Hope you're having a great day, hopefully we can do well, and not have too much debt, but we might. And the RD's running a respectable campaign, cool. Let's see, we have upcoming, up, an upcoming Senate election, and I'll be honest, I don't remember who we're running with. Are we running for the MPP here? We might be. Basic fire control systems, it is 1970, my friends, hope you're having a good, good year. Let's go ahead and do, we already did all this stuff. Resource efficiency gain, are we, are we lacking things? Importing. Extracting, eh, I guess we could extract stuff. It doesn't matter too much. It really doesn't, so might as well, right? And I don't know how we have that much money, but the polls are updated. No one cares. Cool, cool, cool. At least I don't care, especially for the, these elections. It'll be all right, I think. I think we'll be okay. Uh, increase the relations with Himmler, influence and stuff like that, whatever. But yeah, how do we have 18 billion? I guess we never really cut down the debt as much as we should have. That's all right, whatever. That's okay. As long as we can cut it down before things go kaboom in the Middle East. Oh, look at that. All of Syria is a demilitarized zone as Iraq has blown itself up. That's probably not very good for us. Oh, we're here campaign. Let's see. We want the MPPs, obviously, to win. It's a toss-up in the Southwest. A little bit of toss-up in the Great Lakes. East Coast. Let's go ahead and do the Great Lakes again. Love the Great Lakes. Lake Michigan is a beautiful lake. Absolutely beautiful. Iraq. No. No. Iraq, no. Oh! Hello, Syria. Welcome aboard. No! Nothing good can come out of this oil crisis, no! Black, gold, red, sand, people do not want words. The machine falters like any engine worth its name. The American economy functions on a continuous flow of oil. Its bitumen paved the country's many thousands of miles of highway. Its petrols, kerosene, and diesel fuels of trucks, planes, ships, and cars transferring money and goods from city to city. Its naphtha and gas compose many chemicals and heat many homes from the rigs off the Louisiana coast. Or the beautiful wells, a bountiful wells in the Arabian Peninsula. Cheap oil is the linchpin keeping the world's strongest economy strong from the bottom up. Then one sunny day in the turn of a decade, Oil prices quadrupled to twelve dollars a barrel, and like an engine with neither lubricant nor fuel, the world's strongest economy sputters into a sudden stop. Pandemonium strikes Wall Street's floors as indexes dovetail past their troughs, with no sign of slowing down, let alone stopping. Main Street fares a little better. Look only at the miles-long lines of cars outside gas stations across the country, both awaiting shipments of fuel that will never come as confl conflagrations spark abroad. The crisis they've brought to America's shores have skyrocketed the price of goods while simultaneously keeping people from earning money for themselves. In other words, a cataclysm poised to stunt even reverse a decade of growth. America turns desperately to Capitol Hill for an answer to the world's first ever oil shock. Congress turns desperately to the White House for solutions for a quandary and evades modern economic thought. The buck is now landed on the Resolute Desk. When and how shall its occupants respond? So actually, we are literally eight days away, so if we don't click on that. We should be okay for now, so... We got 12 days, so we're not going to touch this unless the focus just automatically bypasses. Hey, look, Iberia still is united. Cool. We're going to stamp out the flames of hate, which would be a good thing. And then we'll deal with this. Oh, don't tell me. Ooh, 30 billion. Ooh, ooh, that's not good. Oh, the growth. Oh, the growth. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, stamp out the flames of hate. Great. Do it. And now we have running on fumes. Might as well do this one because we can't do anything else. And that's a great focus description. And also, I did learn that if you start your campaign again, if you win the second election and you haven't been assassinated yet, the level of your assassination attempt or chance that'll happen resets to zero at the beginning of your new campaign for, you know, your second election. But you can also get assassinated afterwards, I think. So, always got to keep in mind what's going on, get more political power, ease Southern fears, campaign with Wallace, all that good stuff. So, still get 0.42 a day. Could be worse, could be better, but not bad. They run a middling campaign. That's a mediocre campaign. Good. Those who burn crosses, they wear no badges, no armbands. By day, they go without masks. On weekend nights, they get together the tradesmen, the teachers, the shopkeepers, and they doff the white robes and painted hoods and mate on the hill above town. They drag forward the man with the wrong skin color who was seen talking to the wrong girl, and they hang him up high. He watches his... 
Those faceless specters through tear-washed eyes as his lungs gasp and his throat claps as he is left swinging in the light of morning. They are the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan, the ghosts of a regime that died a hundred years ago, stubbornly refusing to give up the archaic beliefs of their forebears. The KKK are infested the southern states like a plague of termites in a rotten house, burrowing into state governments and institutions to spread their influence. Once they've taken hold, they pump their filth into the minds and hearts of southerners, ever growing like a tumor. Is this just in the south? It probably mostly is, but I'd be not caught off guard if it was in maybe a few other places. Just maybe a few other places. It is time that something be done about these masked cowards. We need to break their, their influence and take back the South, but it won't be easy. If we don't do this with finesse, we'll likely spark civil dissent across the South and have to endure political strife in Washington if it looks like we're targeting the Klan because they have different beliefs to us. We could try drafting a bill to ban them outright, or we could try going under the table. Either way, they won't t take it lying down. Ban them? No, no, no. Let's start the back channels. We definitely want to do the back channels because it, it could result in some very bad things for us. So, how to kill a Klansman. Military austerity? I think so. Thank you. So, we have enough on our plate without setting the South on fire by banning the KKK outright, but there might be ways we can neutralize them, or at the very least force them underground without raising an angry mob. We could go down the tried and true path and give our old pal Hoover a call, which might implicate us in illegal activities, or we could try passing some anti-hate speech legislation that would restrict the Kalan's activities without explicitly banning it, which might give our enemies in Congress a soapbox to stand on. Don't forget we have those photographs, Hoover. The law says we can stop race stop saying racist stuff. <laughs> ah, I love it. I don't like that though. A solid FPP campaign, great. Oh, Iraq. Stay, stay Iraq. The words have power. Attacking the clan directly is far too dangerous politically, so getting them through the back channels by passing an anti-hate speech bill is the next best thing, it would be definitely appeal to our voter base. If we restrict how public the clan can be with their propaganda, their vile leaders or vile ideas will reach fewer impressionable ideas and minds, and they'll be forced from the public eye. All that remains is to decide how strong the bill should be, we can make it as strong as possible, but which would severely restrict the operations of hate groups. But we might get attacked by our political opponents for supposedly infringing on the First Amendment. Alternatively, we could water it down to appease our base and to make things easier to get past Congress, but it wouldn't be as effective hurting the clan. Cut out their tongues? Water down like airport bar beer. Oh, I guess they do serve alcohol at the airport, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I suppose we can water it down for now. I mean, I'm trying to toe a middle, some sort of middle ground here. I want things to go by smoothly as much as possible. But obviously we can't do a whole lot. Justice diluted. Even after the, we watered down our anti-hate speech bill, Thurman and his reactionary pals have still managed to take issue with it and have given several impassioned speeches against it, calling it un-American, an abomination, an attack on free speech, yada yada yada. All the stuff we expected, they say, not really that it matters since they can't stop it getting passed. Annoying, though, Thurman's insubordination is. The clan's been dealt with for now, and we've scored a victory against our opponents in Congress, so what if we had, the, had to water down the cause of justice and scale back our plans to tackle inequality in the South? So what if all it does is ultimately cost or does is stop the clan being racist openly? So what if, since we can't they can't operate in public, they'll just continue behind closed doors. We can still stop them. Right? Well, it is what it is. We did the best. Obviously, we, we're not going to achieve utopia here. Well, we're doing the best we possibly can. Running on fumes? Cool. Can we start doing this stuff? Polls are updated? I don't care. Let's see. Everything's bigger in Texas? Great. More fuel? Yes, please. I could cut construction, like I say, in my Glen campaign, but it doesn't matter. Even if I do, that's still there's too much of a deficit to deal with it, so. Let's see, cool. Hey, we're still running on 20 and 4? Not bad. That's actually better than I thought. We did expand uh, civilian budget boost, but the earth bleeds. The horrible fighting has begun again. Beneath the shifting sands of the Middle East, oil pumps like blood through the veins of some slumbering primordial deity. Proboscoid derelicts pierce the sediment in their hundreds, gluttonously sucking up the Earth's bounty to feed the world's limitless thirst for petroleum. It is strange, absurd even to think that the most valuable commodity in the world, and indeed the grease that spins society's cogs, is little more than the corpses of prehistoric flora. And yet every day America burns through uncountable tons of this ancient biomass without which our nation would grind to a screeching halt. Perhaps the only thing in the Middle East older than the land itself is the people. They wanted those sands for a thousand generations before the first city, and they'll surely do again so after the fall of the last. Entrenched in their ancient ways, they fought and married each other for a millennia in the never ending dance of civilization, and every so often, as the years ground by, the creed of humanity exploded under the sudden and ferocious violence. Once more, blood is spilled upon the sand. Under the Italian boot for decades, the Arabs have risen to form the nascent UAR, intent on expelling the foreigners from their homeland and taking claim of their own destiny. As Italians desperately try to stop the spread of rebellion, the Saudi king watches from Riyadh, perhaps seeing his opportunity to grip the region in an iron fist. Our diplomatic staff, terrified of the distant explosions and gunfire they can hear from their offices, have been sending into... Sending in frantic reports of the escalating crisis. Reading between the lines, central message is clear. Our oil supplies threaten. The situation appears bleak. America may soon find itself deprived of oil unless we act soon and decisively. All the Middle East embroils itself in bloodshed. The policymakers in Washington debate what action to take, and our men in the Middle East are airlifted to safety. And one thing is certain, though, it is happening again. The wheel of ages turns once more. 
We lose stability. Oh my gosh, we need that political power. What did you do that for? Ah! Ah! Ooh, East Coast. The New, New England's looking good. The Upper South is not looking good because we want MPP. So we want to do either the East Coast, the Great Lakes, East Coast, Great Lakes, Great Plains. East Coast, Upper East, Central East Coast. Yeah, we'll do that one, why not? It could hurt us, but we'll see what happens. 30 billion? Eh. That's not too bad. Especially since we have our poverty rate increasing rapidly. And once that helps us out, we'll get more money. So, Research facility is looking pretty good, as well as our academic base. Everything's bigger in Texas. National Ethics Committee, great. A ray of hope. We can really need to remove that. Hey, that's 30 billion now. Great. Point for one day. Not bad, not bad. Dofar, Yemen, State of Israel. Everything's bigger in Texas. And now we shall do nothing else down here, so set the prices. Not bad. I'm surprised we still are able to do this. We got 20 and then 4, which we should actually probably be building up more of this. Let's build in Illinois. There you go. Just because we can probably improve our civilian spending. Which gives more. The RDs run a respectable campaign. Well, that's unfortunate. 30 billion. Hopefully that'll drop more. We just gotta fix poverty, man. Just, just fix poverty. That's all you have to do. Just fix it. Double check. We should probably stop training these guys. Go ahead and go repair. Any more ships? 42. I'll throw you right there then. You have quite a few carriers. A stellar MPP campaign. Great. Huzzah for the MPP. That doesn't necessarily mean that these make any difference, but rubber trade with the Brazil is terminated. That is sad. Civilian budget boost. We only get 0.35 a day. Actually, that's not bad if we don't do that, but we need more political power, so. Because, well, RFK's life quite literally depends on it. So we can ease southern fears. I wish we had more political power. I really wish we did. The Federal Energy Office. I don't want to lose daily political power. Why? And stability. Why do you hurt me? Capital is commodities. Wall Street is the heart of the American economy, and today it's be beating harder than ever. Turmoil erupted on the trading floor after a plan to set prices on oil became public, and what can only be described as mass hysteria ensued as raiders followed the trail of current events of the ongoing crisis in the Middle East, realizing the way the wind was blowing. Thankfully, it proved to be a minor hiccup, and the chaos on the trading floor quickly died down. Despite the initial hullabaloo, setting prices on oil still allowed us to maintain control of Washington or Wall Street and kept the markets relatively stable, averting the economic disaster many of our advisors were certain was imminent. Of course, we made a lot of people angry. Commodity traders in, part in particular are unsurprisingly furious, but the anger of a gang of hair-gelled, smooth-talking champagne drinkers is a small price to pay to avoid economic meltdown. Sell, sell, sell. Now that's looking better. Next up, East Coast is looking... Uh, it's kind of a toss-up. Strongly, strongly... Ooh, I'm gonna go back to East Coast. Let's go with the Great Plains next. Boom. Pretty billion, not bad. Not bad. Abu Dhabi? I heard it's very rich. Oh my goodness. Uh, wait, didn't they, didn't they just collapse? Yeah, didn't we literally just do this? Oh my goodness. A bunch of crazies. Well, that's good. That that thing is done. Cool. And oh, what do you do? Bastion on the sea. Carrier organization or expanded task force? Yeah, we're gonna go with this one because we want more carrier organization, capital ship armor, and battleship organization. Which we don't have that many battleships. I don't. I don't know if we ha even have one. Do we have a battleship? No, we have no battleships. That doesn't even matter. We could have 29 carriers, which is pretty good. Syrian Republic, opposition's campaign. 30.12. Whatever. And we still have a deficit of tanks. <laughs> always. Like always. The Federal Energy Office. Why do you hurt me? No! Enforced rationing. Uh, let's not do that one yet. Synthetic alternative. Because the other one lowers our political power again, and we, we don't want that at all. Alright, let's come back over here and do... Better guns! Weapon improvement, 9. <sighs> Iraq. Oh, they run a middling campaign? Great. And if you want to read this class Senate election, so be it, whatever. Alright, let's see what happened. Let's see the damage. So, we lost six Senate seats. The Republicans gained one, or Democrats gained seven, and the far right gained two. Or, they lost two. Oh, that's not good. I mean, we still have 43, don't get me wrong. We still, at the center, have 43 senators. The far right is 18. The Democrats and Republicans, we can probably work with the Republicans pretty well. So, I'm not too worried about that. If we can get at least seven, 
or eight Republicans on whatever vote, we'll be fine. We'll be more than fine. Enforced rationing. Uh, why? Why do you hurt me? Do you not like me? Why? I don't know. It sucks, but whatever. Hmm. Armenian, huh? Greco-Turkish. That's Turkish. I wonder if Turkey has options to colonize these parts of the land. Greco-Turkish, Greco-Turkish. Obviously, this is Macedon oh, Macedonian. And that's Greek, right? Okay, a smart academic base time and time again. Societies crumble. All will agree this is usually a slow, painful process. However, there are many voices of dissent as to the exact cause. One prominent theory is that the foundation of any complex society is education. Molding adolescents to fit a role in any society is key to maintaining its longevity. When a society experiences conflict, be it economic recession, civil war, or social conflict, money and attention is often drawn away from schooling, creating a vicious cycle that slows down technological progress and discovers e and kills curiosity. Great cap, research speed, and output. Exactly what we could use. Kind of. Sort of. Yeah, it just makes sense to do this now, or get more oil, like, in a time of crisis like this, we might as well. And the results are in. Candidates of voters, we've done America Proud, if you want to read this, go right ahead. But we already know the elections, polls are updated, no one cares. Enforced rationing, yeah, still the same, 43, we got quite a few Democrats here, but that's fine with me. Disaster averted, more stability, more political power, a momentary embolism. Cool. Military austerity, nope. That barely does anything. That's like 400 million. Is it 400 million? 400 million dollars for the budget slash for the military. Does nothing. Is it 400 million? Billion. 400 million? Yeah, it is. 400 million. Just casually 400 million just slash. Does almost nothing. Still get 0.32 a day. That's still okay. Disaster averted though. And then after this one, we're going to do Law and Order. And then we're going to do bind up our wounds. Replace a ray of hope with a daring to dreams to get more daily political power, recruitable population, 10% more stability, which is nice, and more war support. Hope we can do this. And then we're going to go gung-ho over here. I'm going to go gung-ho quite a bit. Ah, uh, decrease the poverty. Hey, there you go, my friends. That's exactly what we wanted. Thanks to our greater poverty relief efforts, as well as the expansion of our civilian economy, the poverty rate has decreased significantly enough to be notable internationally. As the government congratulates itself for its efforts, official state projections on the impact of this improved popular prosperity are filed, stating that the people are able to access superior goods, economic opportunity that shall be greatly increased, and our workforce shall be capable of greater and greater feats. At least, at last, a toast to our economists. Beautiful, my friends. I look to the Arabian Peninsula. Our oil prices have finally fallen from their peak after fast, painstaking action from Washington in the crisis immediate days. Once growing to exponential highs, they now begin their slow yet inexorable decline to bearable lows. It may take years before they fully return to normal, if they ever return, of course. But America sighs a uh, breath of relief regardless. Its people, knowing that they can finally go back to work and pay reasonably for their essentials. And its government, knowing they can finally turn outwards to address the oil shock's root cause. Many can reasonably point to Italy's crumbling empire in the Middle East as point zero as the world's markets newest growing pain. Their inability to contain or at least moderate the rare people's unrest has caused wave after of wave of disruptions to the world's largest supplier of sweet, cheap, crude oil. With Congress near unanimous in their apathy for the alien and aloof empire's miserable fortunes, Washington has decided that supporting the movements to break the peninsula free from Rome's talons will be most help in stabilizing the region and in turn its oil wells. Still, even proponents of the pro-Arab intervention are divided over ex its extent and recipients. Vigorous debate has sprung from whether or not America should lend its hand to Yasser Afarat Batast and the UAR, or to the influential House of Saud and its patriarch King Faisal. It's, if ambiguous over said hand size, shape, and delivery, then President of the United States of America has at least settled the prior argument, deciding in favor of... Oh, crap. I don't know. The pan Arabs in Cairo? Well, with the Glen Rao that we're also doing at the same time as this, we were forced to go with the pan Arabs in Cairo. Let's go with the dynasts in the Rihad. Just to make it a little different. That sounds a lot, like a lot of fun. So now, do we get anything else unlocked here? Not yet. We can still do all this stuff and unite the OFN a little bit more, but nah, we're good. Let's do Law and Order, because I want to bind up our wounds. Ask any better cynic about American justice a year ago, and they will have unabashedly spoken of its hypocrisies and the miseries that it caused them or caused to those it swore to protect. The perverse and corrupting touch of racism has caressed it since the nation's founding, hence falling to unleash its otherwise heavy blows towards slave masters old and new. Nothing will change it. They have lamented so misfortunate the American black has been in, is, and will be. Fast forward a year later. Our campaign against the Dixocrats and their beloved Jim Crow seemed to change much in the shape of American lawmaking. Civil rights now flow freely from the marble-doomed 
courthouses where public judges once enforced edicts of barely conceivable hate. Policemen now patrol the streets without regard for the criminal's skin color. Gavels now punctuate fair verdicts for all Americans as if their wielder now wears Lady Justice's blindfold in every trial. Ask a bitter cynic a year ago that things will change and one will only be responded with the spiteful laughs of hopeless men. So we are now behooved to reach out to them and give them hope until we prove them wrong of something, of course. A dream deferred, cool. And because we helped out with the poverty rate, which is still getting better, 3.75 every month, we're 15 to 25 percent, and we have mitigated the effects of the oil crisis. I'm expecting some better things here. Hopefully, better food banks are nice. Social democracy, of course, military austerity, imposed rationing, control of markets. Oof. And hey, look at that! 4.3 billion, not bad. That's actually pretty darn good. A momentary embolism. Looming disaster has been avoided for now, and oil flows again freely through America's veins thanks to our oil rationing and price setting and the expansion of our domestic petroleum industry. Now our citizens can once again drive to their dead-end jobs and eat up their TV dinners without fear of impediment. And thank goodness for that, because without oil, America would come apart like a house of cards in a tropical typhoon. Nevertheless, we cannot let ourselves become complacent. The turmoil in the Middle East does not look like it's going to stop anytime soon, and although the brunt of the crisis has been averted for a long time, being if the violent escalates, we can expect a similarly chaotic impact on America's markets. Our oil supplies are already stretched pretty far, and the worse it gets, the more draconian our responses will have to be just to keep the wheels spinning. Frankly, the reports coming in from our men in the Middle East are getting bleaker by the day. Oil distribution is still far away from secure, and it appears as if none of the players have the power to end this conflict quickly. Most worryingly, we've just received a report from the CIA about several UAR nations joining into a single political entity, but who's to say if it's accurate? All kinds of rumors are pouring in, and it's getting more and more difficult to separate the truth from the baseless group, or gossip. Right now, there's no way to tell which way the wind is blowing, and that kind of uncertainty isn't good for anyone. We'll have to wait and see, but for now, it seems the worst has been avoided for now. Back to normal. Ish. 4.3. That's amazing. 4.3 billion. We still have one? Oh, we just built a nuclear reactor. Let's go ahead and build in the Dakotas. And Nebraska. And is this Kansas? That's Colorado. I was, I was confused Kansas and Colorado. They both start with C or K. And prove rubber. Since we're here, we might as well, right? We might as well. 86 political power. Not bad. I'm going to continue to ease southern fears. Uh, the NPP is ready for anything. As well as R&D, they're really willing to work together. I'm just going to do East Southern Fears just in... Well, happy 1971, first of all. But I will East Southern Fears once we are seen as a more liberal candidate. So we'll do that. But unfortunately, I will be right back. All right, my apologies about that. But I had to tend to other things. Regardless, hopefully this oil crisis will go away. Or at least the effects of it will mitigate. I know the actual oil crisis itself will not go away. And there's a border war between the English... And the Welsh versus the Scots. And after the border war, they just went to war with each other. Cool. Very nice. Good job, guys. Keep it up. Kill each other. Only 559 billion. That's so sad. But good luck, guys. You're going to need it. Actually, you're not in any faction, are you? Are they? Maybe, they're, maybe they're in the Unity Pact? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not, actually. No, they by themselves. The Unity Pact is looking pretty small compared to what it was once was. The Co-Prosperity Sphere. Uh, civilian budget boost. Actually, we actually, even with the oil crisis, have a deficit if we don't have the civilian budget boost. Honestly, if it's going to be like this, maybe we start slashing the debt maybe a little bit more? Hey, Law and Order, though. That's nice. Let's go and finish this side of the tree. Bind up our wounds. Long have we battled the specter of racism in the halls of Congress, the courts of law, and the streets of asphalt. From all sides we have been struck and slow. To our front, the dying husks of Jim Crow. To our back, its sympathizers akin to the copperheads of old. We're in the skin of progressivism, no matter its flimsy, transparent make. From side to side, wastrel, apathetic to the misery, corrupting America's foundations from the inside out, threatening to end the comfort of with which they live. But we never wavered. Neither did the throngs of muddled, huddled masses behind us, pouring blood, sweat, and tears into the dangersome fray for the slimiest chance to breathe the free air of our beloved country. Every right forge and brotherly love in the bleak days of revolution, allied with the brotherly blood in the horrible days of civil war, we upheld with every barricade upended, every dog-headed racist ousted, every black brother and sister unchained. Now nothing is left of America's original sin, save for the sputtered, choking gasp of the peculiar institution's misbegotten son in the backwaters. In yet another trial of fire, America has seen itself battered, bruised, and bleeding, but unbowed still. Through, though fresh wounds mar its skin, it is now tru truly able to mend and heal it from the many ordeals it has faced. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, I, I will spend more money once we get the debt under control, though. Let's do that. We'll, we'll do that. And we gotta make sure we uh, ease some southern fears as well. At the same time, because we can. And there goes Colorado. Oh, crap. A dream deferred. Leroy Thomas sat with his heart in his mouth as his, 
As the little sitter cried her eyes out on the family's tasteful upholstered couch, telling them how a group of white boys stopped their bikes to yell at her as she walked home from school. They threw stones at her and said African Americans weren't welcome in their neighborhood. Then one of them spat in her face and they pedaled all the way home laughing. Leroy remembered hearing about that senator from Washington coming to town and how he'd given some kind of speech. It seemed to have made the tensions in Milwaukee even more strained than they had already were. On the radio, they were saying there'd been riots in Detroit and Des Moines, uh, whites intimidating black students and breaking the windows of black owned businesses. It seemed like the president was trying to make things better for them, but with everything he did, that should have been that and it had the opposite result. The president meant well, but the White House was far removed from the turmoil unfolded on the streets. Leroy had hardly forgotten where he'd come from home from school to a brick through the window, most likely thrown by one of their neighbors who smiled at them on the sidewalk. Leroy felt his hands clasped in a fist so tight it made his knuckles pale. What kind of brother was he if he couldn't even protect his own sister? He knew that he couldn't rely on any authorities. Leroy felt his resolve harden. He knew that he had to grow up and fast. America was changing, but there'd always be those who would hate him for the color of his skin. When they came, he'd be ready. I, too, am America. Ooh, we get political power. Nice. And more social democracy. Oh, look at that, 54%. Nice. And I did not edit that at all. Good. Because sometimes you have to use console commands to get things done, so you can elect certain people so that you can have a good, cool campaign. We'll put it like that. Campaign where we have it? Nope. CIA operations approved. Nope. Nope. Diplomatic arena. War and pacifism. We get more daily political power, but really we lose that because it costs 100. Weekly war support would not be bad. But we don't need it. Getting England on the side. Well, I mean, our influence is at, at max, so it's really kind of up to them. A little bit of lag there, I'd say. The UK is defeated the Scottish state. Good job, guys. And the United Kingdom is alive. Let's go ahead and do eh, artillery. Why not? Howitzers. Cool. England defeats Scotland. A unit, but at what cost? Cool. British reunification. Fighting black market influence. Uh, we shouldn't have that much influence, though. I kind of do want to ease Southern fears, but let's get through this one first. I think there's... I just heard of that soft sound or something. Was that just the unification of the UK, maybe? Alright, Iraq, you're having a good time. Hey, Iraq is finally unified, kind of. We don't really like them. They got a good amount of war support under Ahmed, Ahmed Hassan al bakar And they have a non-aggression pact with Italy. Interesting. German industrial support. Wow. Wehrmacht advises, huh? Bind up our wounds, my friends. Bind them up. And we're done with this part of the focus tree. Great! Wow, I can't believe we actually did that. Now, do we have anything... Oh, hold on. Pull it down. Reach out to Riyadin. Secure our interests. Guess for the king. King Faisal, I'm CIA. Finding their leaders. Ooh, all those who attempt to join our enemies will be eliminated. Stepping up the shipments. Operation Sandstorm. Not bad. Black Gold Rush. Pick your targets. In for the kill. Not bad, not bad. An unsavory bargain. They can handle this war. Operation Eagle Eye. Our support is conditional. Call up the palace. Victims of war. Expand the no-fly zone. Enlist our allies. A little more unified. Send in the spooks. Prepare the blockade. I'll be honest. I kind of want to secure our own interests. I want to get... I want to get involved. Like... I want to make sure that they win and we get our things accomplished, so that probably would be good. But let's go ahead and do maybe building a social net first. A safety net. In a healthy society, its members are free to pursue their own paths towards self-fulfillment. Without their dues becoming too great a burden to bear, anyone can become whoever they wish to be, provided they work in earnest for it. In contrast, a sickly society leaves little room for a free expression and social mobility. Everyone has a place and appropriate standing, whether they like it or not. In America, that place is dictated by a man's dollars earned too little. They cannot dedicate themselves to anything but making enough to get by. It stifles the faculties and puts undue stress on the working man. But more importantly, it forments dissent, which simmers into a violent cauldron of breaking poil. This can be prevented with a robust network of benefits and pensions, which they can rely on to make ends meet. Although President Kennedy had promised such, whether or not he can actually back rhetoric with action or in the face of bipartisan backlash remains to be seen. More social democracy support, thank you. Bastion on the sea, awesome. Campaign where we haven't, we're okay. Great, we actually did finish this. Great, I've never finished the naval doctrine before. Awesome. We can do radar. Let's get some armor. Better main battle tanks. Beautiful, my friends. The burden of a just man. Yes, all Robert Kennedy ever wanted to do was make America a better place. Yet he mused as he swirled a mouthful of scotch around his mouth. It seemed like Americans didn't want liberty, freedom, and justice for all. Reflecting on the endless struggles he had faced to try and reform the nation, Kennedy had come to the better conclusion that the average American is cruel, petty, small-minded, and above all else afraid. 
Violence on the streets, pundits ranting, ranting on every radio and television, extremism becoming the norm. All because he tried to bring America to a new harmonious future. All because he tried to send the black kids to school and reform corrupt institutions. Sure, he had to do a few dirty things to get there, but no one ever said politics was an honest man's game. How the heck are you supposed to get to keep the high road if your opponents will stoop at the lowest attacks against you? The president felt another migraine coming on, stretching around his head like an infernal coronet. Uh, he groaned and put his head in his hands. America was a better place, and assistants hated him for it. Uneasy lies ahead that wears a crown. Just in case, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to eat Southern Fears. More liberal... Li no. Let's do it just in case. Just in case. I don't trust what's, what could happen, so... And we still have 100 political power. We get 0 .31 a day, which isn't very much. But we can expand that later on. It is what it is. Yeah, doing civilian budget boosts really does help. We're going to cut down the debt for now. Improved rubber processing. Nice. Very nice. Let's go ahead and grab... Naval stuff? Well, we might do some naval stuff. Yeah, why not? A better carrier? Sounds like a good idea. And we have... This? Another operative, huh? Wade. Hamilton. Let's get Wade. Yeah, let's get Wade. What do we have over here? Uh, talk with hardline supporters. Political landscape. I mean, it doesn't matter. We don't need to increase party unity. International CI operations. No, we good. Getting England on the side, that'd be kind of, Wait. Getting England on the side would be kind of nice, but we don't need to do that. Yeah, not bad. We're doing pretty darn well, I'd say. Cut down the budget for now. That'd be fine. As much as I want the budget boost, it's okay. Build a safety net. Military austerity. The rights of the workers. Federal uh, minimum wage. Implementing public pensions. Test the waters. Power of a handshake. We do get political power. Let's go ahead and do this one up here, though. Reach out to Ri Riyadh. Saudi Arabia holds more cheap oil than any other nation on Earth. Miles of oil wells have stuck out of its dunes for decades, pumping millions of barrels of liquid gold a day. Italian colonials have expanded these lucrative fields to new plays underneath both the desert sands and the Persian Gulf. In a twist of irony, the Arabian desert is now an oasis for a planet famished for oil. The president's advisors unanimously believe King Faisal is America's ticket out of the oil crisis. However, its ideal method of approach is still subject to debate. Some believe Arabia needs firm reassurances from the free world up to up to and especially a tour force. Tour de force. Conversely, others warn of risks involved in repeating the South African and Indonesian debacles, instead advocating for diplomacy and more clandestine means to support the monarch. Yeah, no, we won like both times. Like RFK has a reputation now. Ooh, it's like a night of long knives. But we life does not forgive weakness. Pretty much to last forever. But, uh, yeah, with RFK, can't go wrong. He will lead us to the... Oh. There goes the Shaw. But he will lead us to victory, no matter what, right? Right? Nothing bad could ever happen under RFK. Oh, sh Bad words. Where did we get this here from? Oh, civilian spending. Oh, that's why. Uh... Actually, yeah, that actually hurt us. By cutting that. Uh... Slash it. Hmm. Here's this one. Happy 1971. Still get point two two a day. That's not bad. Not great, but not bad. Keep working on the modern research facilities. Do you get any... Is there a level higher than that? The Iranian Civil War. The Persian powder cake explodes last. Oh my goodness. Mod oh, yeah, there is. We actually get more politicized academia. Huh. Huh. Cool. Okay, so, Iran, why are you doing this? Why? 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 Can't do that one. Yep. Come back over here. Anything? 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 Better choppers, because we're about to send them over, probably. In recent years, we've seen Persia become a wide breeding ground of oppression, ruthless authoritarianism during the rule of Pahlavi. Pahlavi. Pressures from Berlin and Tokyo have caused a cave-in for the fragile political structure of the once proud nation. However, the people have started to speak out against tyranny and are shining opportunities developing itself right before our eyes. The National Front, formerly outlawed under the Shah's one-party dynasty, has made a resurgence in the local population, and every class seems to show its support. Farmers, soldiers, noblemen alike. In a surprising referendum directed to the parliament, the people demanded free elections, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and among other things, there was Results. Over 200 freedom fighters dead, over a thousand wounded. Angered at this sight, Democratic politicians continue to speak out against the Shah, all while building up a competent army in the southern half of the country alongside the Zagros Mountains and the Persian coast. A constitution was signed, and the new Republic of Iran succeeded only a few hours ago. Persia is a gate through which the Caucasus. 
India, Central Asia, and the Middle East can be accessed. We don't want, also want the barbaric German eagle spreading its talons over the oil reserves in Iran. With a friendly government, any chance of the Germans are have at filling up their panzers with Persian oil is slim. If the liberals win this conflict, they could be our experiment with democracy in the region, a beacon of hope for the peoples of the Middle East. We must be hasty. The frail democracy is already on the defensive. Yet another circle for freedom is all we need. Uh, who can we send volunteers to? Oh, crap. No, we were trying to do this one. Where is it? Oh, it's down here, isn't it? The Iranian Civil War. War grips Iran, one of the few countries in the Muslim world with a strong tradition for democracy. If we are to serious about our commitment to ensuring fascism is contained everywhere in the world, we must be as forceful and determined in a response to the civil war as we are as like we were like in countless countries like South Africa and Indonesia. The US has always been and always will remain a steadfast ally of anti fascists everywhere, and America has always been a true friend of Iran. We must look to organizing a response, and we cannot uh, let the fascists control the oil reserves there to fuel their evil empires. Well, let's hope so. That's really hope so. Basic artillery, advanced artillery. No more garbage here. Uh, almost less than 30 billion now. Nice. Oh, the Iranian Civil War, and we shall do the Iranian Aid Bill. The House Foreign Policy... Oh, we can still do this stuff too, just to let you know. Has swiftly drawn up a bill authorizing dispatch of advisors, equipment, and financial aid to Iran, as well as authorizing the government to advise, organize, and dispatch volunteer divisions from both veteran and active duty army personnel. Once this goes through Congress, it'll help will be on its way to the brave Iranians. Oh, we can send volunteers. Yes. I'm going to spend the political power to do so. Intensify volunteers. We probably don't need to do that. Okay, so right now, the Iranian aid bill. America aid inbound. American equipment. Advisors. Ooh, we lose political power from this one. Buy American equipment. American loans. Well, we could give them loans. I don't mind. CIA advisors. Grand strategy. Promise more American soldiers. We lose political power. Promise more American equipment. We lose political power again. To free the oppressed. Darwin Supply Hub. The M new MIC contracts. A beacon of hope. Well, we'll do this one. Uh, the Iran war decisions should be fine. We can now assist the liberals. Maybe get some more political power and war support. That'd be fine. I don't want to get too bogged down here. So, who do we want to help out? The Shahdom? Oh, we got... Oh, we, oh, the Democratic Republic. Yeah, that's right. What? Oh, man. A princess. Farah Pahlavi. Just sign me up, for the love of God. Yes. We can only send two divisions, but that's okay with me. Well, boys, it sounds like air helicopters are back on the menu. And under JFK's leadership, we will be more than ready to do this. Did I not... Uh, we can send 160. That's fine. All right. Oh, our ships are all over here. Go home, guys. Okay, they're just kind of stuck. Whatever. Let's see. Planes, bombing, casts. Well, we'll send 100 of these guys over immediately. I forget which group we were using before, so... There you go. And then, you guys... Nice. Go over here, too. Boom. 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 Oh, the Shadam. Oh, you guys are all the way up here. That kind of sucks. You guys fight that. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with everyone down here, probably. You know what? I'm glad we could finally go back to war. Finally! It feels like it's such an American thing to do. we got to go back to war and have a good time. I just want to slash the budget, too. Or slash the deficit. Iranian aid bill. Just this morning, Congress passed an Iranian aid bill with an acceptable majority, giving us the power to send volunteers and military advisors to the National Force front forces. Until our commitment can reach the Persian coast, we have invested $100 million to keep the liberals fighting. Furthermore, this bill ensures our lasting cooperation with the Republic of Iran, and now we're committed to keeping the candle lit for as long as possible. Already as money flows into the newly established nation, the locals have been praising us for our swift efforts. We've also been getting positive results or reports from the population here, and it seems people are more eager to combat oppression in Iran than any other war in the past decade. We cannot fail the public now. Quite a little lending hand to a faraway land. Cool. And I, we're going to do this. It's only two weeks. Just so we can get some more political power. The Iranian Aid Act has been quickly rushed through Congress to ensure a timely response to the crisis there. An immediate loan of $100 million has been granted to the Iranian liberal faction so they can fund their armed forces until American equipment and volunteers can arrive in mass. Initial military advisors are to be dispatched as soon as the secure flights can be established, followed by the equipment then and then the volunteers. With some luck, the Iranian liberal movement will soon be strong and economically stable, a force that can sweep aside the armies of tyranny opposing them. I'm sorry if I'm reading fast. By the time I'm recording this, my mind is kind of gone, so... 
It is what it is, and we have shown up. All right, time to get to work, my friends. Oh, yeah. Eerie? Oh, this feels like old times. Feels like old, old great times. We already lost a plane. And we're doing some good old air damage. Ground support. Like I said, my mind is going bye-bye, so... Actually, who's allied here? So there's a revolutionary Iranian liberation front, which means we can go all the way up around here. Uh, how do we want to strike? Oh, who are, who are these guys? The commies? Yeah, authoritarian socialists. Iraj Eskaranji. Socialists, huh? So we gotta fight these... Actually, no, we're all allied together. We're just trying to fight the Imperial State. Okay, that's not too bad then. If that's the case, I'm gonna come closer to the airbase, so let's go right there. How fast are you guys moving? 28? 28? Not bad. Not bad, man. Actually, I should probably stop slashing the military budget now, because that does hurt our uh, capabilities. Intensify volunteers, we're good. What can we do? Eh, all that stuff doesn't matter. We won't need that many divisions to do this. Move in. There you go. Hey, you're getting attacked. Nice job. So we got two militia divisions. Help out here then. Actually, our planes. What's the range like? Oh, it is more than good enough, I think. Cast is good. Fighters. Do they have the same range? 20, 90. Yeah, they do. Good. Oh, no, they sent us some tanks. Beautiful. Help out, help out. We've not used these guys for quite a long time, and we're done helping them out. Cool. And the power of a handshake. Yeah, we could do that. Simple gestures leave immeasurable impacts on one's interactions with others. A handshake takes its place among the most important in American culture by firmly clasping the hand of another. Then shaking it firmly, both establish either status as the other's peer. With a simple handshake, a man, man announces to another his good intentions, his respect for their dignity, and his belief in the equal standing, which... Perhaps explains why our captains of industry never seem to shake the hands of the workers they employ. Reaching out to this country's twice pit requires actively establishing good faith in our part. If we aim to bridge the crevices of the American society, then the government must take the first few steps towards building the paths to cross them. For the president, this magnitude magnitudinous task before him begins with a simple handshake. Get more political power? Yes, please. Thank you. We moved in. And we cut off. Oh, maybe not. Or maybe we can. Who knows? These divisions are pretty tough. I mean, these guys have been cut off down here, which doesn't matter to us. If we can force the attack, we might just be able to really wall up these guys much more effectively. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You've got this. We can pair drop with these guys, but I don't like pair dropping. I've done it before, and I've been very successful at it, but... Uh... Oh, there goes our supports. We won! Okay, that was fast. Okay. Sure, why not? Less than 30 billion in terms of deficit. So, the war isn't over yet. Not really. They're still allied for now. But, oh, they actually have a focus tree? They actually have a kind of a focus tree. That's kind of cool. Uh, now what? <laughs> oh, we have the Baluchi Liberation Front here, down here, too. Well, good job, guys. How many men have you lost in that conflict? Zero. Well, I guess technically the, the theater is closed now, but... Okay. I mean, we were there for less than a month, maybe? Not bad. I mean, wh what else am I supposed to say about that? Like, I want these guys to kill each other off now. Oh, look at that. Carrier hole's nice. Very nice. Can we get any better things here? Yes, we can. That's nice. Torpedo launchers. Eh, that stuff. Nuclear carrier stuff. Oh, yeah. So, that means you are done. Boom. USS Enterprise, the power of handshake. Carriers. Albany class. Cruiser hull is cool. Which hand to shake? The President and his allies have been stumping around the nation for weeks now, rallying support for his expansive social security program, slowly moving the needle in favor of his proposals. Each speech from the big auditoriums in the cities to the small stages at the county fairs convinces more and more people that the plan was big and bold will undoubtedly help millions of Americans that need it. In Cleveland, Ohio, as Bobby Kennedy climbs off the stage after giving another speech at the public auditorium, he is greeted by a huge crowd of supporters and whispers and well-wishers. As Secret Service agents keep out a nervous eye, aides hurry up to follow the president, and news, news photographers and reporters from local newspapers and from the Associated Press hustle up to get a good shot as it begins to glad handle the crowd. It was later the group that Bobby was most concerned about, as the pictures that they took would be printed in the newspapers around the country. Therefore, even as he walked out on the stage to give his speech, he was discussing with advisors what to do when he was done. It was important that he got the right look, the right message across on who he would first shake hands with 
undoubtedly the most likely image to be seen tomorrow morning from coast to coast. Should he make shake hands with a man in the crowd with an FR MPP button pinned to his chest, an average Joe to show that he was willing to work with the entire party, or perhaps the head of the Cleveland chapter of the NAACP to show the strong bonds that RFK has, has with African African American community, or maybe the head of the tip Typographical Workers Union Local 53, which is one of the oldest unions in the city, to show solidarity with the working class. It has had been in the back of the head of the president's mind from the moment he started his speech, and now with fractions of a second to think, he stretches his hand out to think. History will judge the government by how they support the poor and helpless, the uh, president of the local NAACP branch, the head of the typographical workers' union. We can get more support from the unions. Let's see, Heartland supporters. But we can always get more from the unions anyways. Let's how uh, support the poor and helpless. Let's do that one first. Just because we can always get more support from the unions and radical support base. We, with African Americans, people might not like that. Some people won't. Some people will, obviously, but eh, we're kind of stuck. Divine Man to Siberia. You're going crazy. But I love it. You're both finding these guys. Men versus Batov versus Zykov. Oh yeah, we have a focus to do. Forgot about that. And let's do this one just since we were trying to do this earlier, so... That'd be nice. And we almost miss it that many days. That's okay. Okay, so with Iran done... Can we have Iran Civil War 2? A Beacon of Hope? We get more political power if we go down that way, but eh. The bitterest of the bitter. An ad in the Rust Belt, huh? The American worker struggled as one of the small victories eked out from the Titanic sacrifice. Noxious smoke, searing heat, and blistered feet for 14 hours a day, often more. Bruises and dead bodies littering factory yards, and while hired thugs protect Prince Parsis machines. Oh, there they go. Uh, oh, a little bit of lag. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Uh, Prices machines from valueless men. Fair compensation and fair play, say the picket signs, as brave men and women stare at barrel holes of tense firing lines. The government's answer at long last, but only after, not before, the inevitable massacre. The workers' memories long and their uh, history ugly, as red blood as a flag as they wave. Reaching out to this country's many scorn requires acknowledgement from those who had ignored it. And we, the government, are there to them the worst kind of ignorant. President Kennedy can only appeal to their last bit of hope and promise them that the blood they had shed will not be in vain and add in the Rust Belt. We're going to do that one next. As you can tell, the Iranian Revolutionary Alliance collapses further into the abyss. Fine with me. Oh, wait. Can we send you volunteers? Yes. Can we send anyone else volunteers? They're a conservative democracy. German bombing runs. Oh, crap. Oh, that is not good. And Kolmeini. German bombing runs, huh? German bombing runs, huh? Does everyone have German bombing runs? I guess everyone has German bombing runs. They just bomb all the Iranians. They don't even know who's here. Alright, well, whatever. I think it was a DC that we got our planes back or something? Or where, where are our planes? Let's see. Oh, I don't want to look for them in that area. That That's too much. Ooh, planes, planes, planes. Maybe in California. Oh, god dang it. Where are the planes? Oh, there's 40. Oh, this is bombing wing. They're tactical bombers. This, these ones are. God dang it. Well, we, we, I see you right now, so come over here. And... Alright, so 30, 100, 100, 60. There you, oh, there you are. Oh, you're in Madagascar. No wonder I couldn't find you in the States. Oh, we only sent 40. Oh, that sucks. If that's the case, we're going to cut you guys down to half, and then you're going to actually come down furthermore. We might not have ground support, but that's okay. Right, these are tactical jet fighters. Good. That'd be fine. And I'm just going to uh, get rid of you guys. Then. I don't really care. It's fine. And for you, I'm, I'm sending you to DC, so that or close to DC, so we know exactly where you're at. There you go. And we're going back immediately. They took all that, they didn't get that much here, but we'll kill all these guys off. It won't be that bad. Especially since it's a, what, one, two, three, four ways of a war? Love it. Now, we don't have to do East Southern Fears again, just because we haven't been doing too many more liberal actions. Even though everything we do is fairly progressive, we'll say. But that's okay. Special Forces, more soft attack, organization, supply grace. Oh, yeah. We need that immediately. How's our supply planes doing? Or just planes in general? Hey, they showed up. Great. Well, Iranian Civil War, Electric Boogaloo number two. Oh, uh, where are you guys? 
you know what? We're gonna help these guys out down here first. We want to rescue these guys. So good luck, reach out to Yihad, and we'll do the bitterest of the poor, bitter. We already read this, so and add in the rust belt. Cool, and they made it down there. Good. Come down here. There you go. Kill them off. Our man in Riyadh. Riyadh. As the airplane's doors opened, the heat hit Bruce in the face like a nuclear blast. To a Minnesota boy used to freezing winters and mild summers, it was like stepping into a kiln. Or kiln. Christ, he knew it was going to be hot, but this was something else. Lucifer himself would sweat in this. Bruce gathered, resolved, and started down the st air stair to the scorching tarmac of the runway. He could hardly feel his shirt moistening, and after only a few seconds in Riyadh, he understood instantly why the Arabs wore those billing robes. Parked ostentatiously. In the middle of the airship was a Rolls Royce, dark green as far as he could tell through the light gl reflecting blindly off the chassis. The chauffeur opened the rear door. Bruce gave him a nod and ducked inside. God is merciful. It was air-conditioned. Hell's bells saw Bruce in air-conditioned cars, a luxury even back in the States, and here's one in the Middle East of the god dang desert. Sitting opposite of him and flanked by two extremely large bodyguards was Crown Prince Khalid, swathed in enough white robe to sue a sail for the Spanish treasure galleon. He shook Khalid's hand as the Crown Prince scrutinized him though as a aviate through his Aviated glass sunglasses and responded to his pleasantries in impeccable English. A pleasure, Mr. Langan, he said, although his face betrayed little. As they were driven to the palace, Bruce and the Crown Prince st steadily discussed the region's ongoing conflict, Bruce assuring the Prince of America's unwavering commitment to the Saudi Arabians in the face of crisis. Nevertheless, as the two discussed the merits of this of that policy, Bruce couldn't get the Rolls Royce out of his head. This man is driving in a Rolls, he thought, and Rolls Royce, and when his father, grandfather rode a camel, would his grandson also drive the rolls, or would the House of Saud once again ride camels over Arabia's shifting sands? How long can they conjure money from the desert? Holy crap. Man, rolls voice, god dang. But he is, I guess, a prince, so. I want these guys to get down here, and we're gonna do that, do that, and trickle them and kill them. Boom. Oh, and they're gone. Military austerity, keep slashing. Doesn't matter. Alright, Kharaman. Yazd? I have no idea how to pronounce these places. I know nothing about Iran or Persia or stuff like that, so. Oh, we have tanks here. Oh, cool. Cool. Civilian austerity. Go bye bye. Nice. We're actually getting attacked ourselves. Oh, uh, you know what? Let's hold for now. No, 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 don't do that. Not the screaming eagles. Hold for now. If anything, do this. Just take all the land they have. That's kind of nice, right? Should have air superiority, right? And we're up to 40 still. Can't do much about that. It's fine. Keep defending. Oh, do not get in circle. You could probably move fast enough to not get in circle. There you go. Great. Push him back. We're going to whittle them down to nothing as, as best we can. So. Push him back. Hurt them as much as you can. Oh, no. Oh, no. What the heck? I can't help you right there. What the heck, man? Italy. 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 That was way too fast. Italy went to war with Saudi Arabia? I was not expecting that immediately. Holy cow. Oh, you guys might get defeated there. That's not good. Come on, beat these guys up. Better main battle tanks is nice. Uh, Helicopter-wise. I sent you I should have got this. More advanced scout helicopters. Hueys. Advanced transports. I forget which one we're using. Let's see. Our divisions currently are using airborne divisions. Transport helicopters. So we got to get that one first. Advanced transport helicopters. More breakthrough? Yes, please. Yes. That's fine. At this point, I'm not really sure where we can go. We'll do the best whatever we can do. Alright, they left, so we're going to go in there first. Thank you. If we both attack here, we could probably win. I just want to defeat the enemies as much as possible. Saudi Arabia, please do not get naval invaded. Please, please, please. Please give us Italian incompetency. You can move in there first, so we can be on the defensive. I prefer being on the defensive than anything else. Just don't lose Shiraz. Go over there too. Defend, defend, defend. Actually, yeah, that's okay. Up out here is again. Really weaken them. There you go. The bitterest of the bitter. 
uh, uh, rose by any other name. Sure, why not? Since Kennedy's great American tour, we've made many strides in increasing the appeal of our reforms in the U.S. Every day that passes is another day where we make a case to the American public and where the MPP's ranks, and particularly the party's center ranks, grows in number. But the good that we've done here must also be, not also be constrained by our borders. As the free world's greatest champion, it is our responsibility to cultivate support of our newfound freedoms overseas. With that in mind, the Kennedy administration has established a think tank for individuals who share its will to spread freedom of and by for the people, but not its means. They will work with our neighbors and with our member states of the OFN, drafting policies that both align with the country's priorities and further their own people's inalienable rights. In due time, America will spearhead a new breath of freedom for a world filled with tyrants, and Rose's International is its spirit tip for this noble endeavor. I gotta stop slashing the military budget. But I'm seeing opportunity right here. Air assault, yes. I'm glad we got that now. And even though I do know that we should help out the Saudis, because they... I mean, Italy's literally just going to war with them right now, but, you know, we'll do the best we can. If we can circle these divisions, that'd be great. And add in the Rust Belt. Ooh. There's been a single constant in our nation's history that hard-working men and women will always be there to forge new trails, dig out the resources, establish new farms, turn iron into steel, and build our greatest landmarks in the strongest economy in the world. Isn't it time that they should be rewarded? The new social security system will help all workers across the nation, ensuring that in the event of injury or ill health, if troubled times lie ahead or you have reached 65 and are ready to retire, that you will still be helped and cared for with a pension and aid so that you can live a life of decency and honor to thank you for the hard work that helped build our nation. The president, I'm President Robert Kennedy, and I approve this message. Awesome. We gotta put through here. Death of a Supreme Court Justice. Sad news is coming over the wires. One of our senior most ju justices on the su U.S. Supreme Court has passed away, a liberal. They wrote several notable opinions throughout their tenure, both concurring and dissenting. In addition, they were the swing justice in more than one case. However, with a solemn moment comes an opportunity to change the balance of the highest court of the land. We'll have to get the right nominee and manage the Senate processes carefully. But if we succeed, it'll be a major victory for our administration. Let's fill the vacancy. I want, uh, you know what, go to calm. Or calm? Calm? I have no idea. Okay, we got there. Cool. Go over here and circle these guys. Oh boy. Is there a tile we can go right there? That'd be good. Oh crap, come on. I just want to cut them off. Just cut them off. Oh, we're getting attacked there too. Oh crap, that's not good. You gotta defend then. Okay, we got the guys in there, that's good. Make sure we don't get surrounded. Cut these guys off. If possible, don't actually get, get cut off ourselves. That would be very bad. Move here immediately. See if you can attack and win. Oh, crap. crap, 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 crap. Oh, crap. Uh, we can attack and break through. That's good. That's good. Come on. We did it. Kill them off immediately. Don't give them a way out. Don't give them a way out. Controlled markets are gone. Slash that a little bit. More. We did it. Boom. All right. The new capital is probably Tehran. Oh, God. It's all the way up there. Are you kidding me? Hmm, this is not easy. I don't want to take this area back. The main goal is to just crush these guys as much as possible. So let's come right here. We still need to ease southern fears. We don't need to escalate this anymore, though, so. Oh, we're getting attacked here. That's fine. Uh, losses thus far include 4,500, so basically 5,000. So be it, whatever. Uh, go right there and circle these guys. Beautiful. Immediately attack. Help out. Nope. Boom. I love... I mean, you know, this, I've found a new love for these helicopters and stuff. They're just so good. They attack, and we can re really counter -attack. Boom. Keep these guys in place. Oh, man. I want to make an encirclement. This is so incredibly risky. Oh, we get attacked. Oh, we, we were so fast. We could... Oh, my goodness. Okay. Not bad. Can we take this area? Can we just take everything they have around here? Including maybe even, like, Tehran? Can we hold them there? That'd be good. A rose by any other name. But now we must focus back up here, probably. Let's go and do it securing our interests. America runs a race against an oil market on the brink of freefall. If it fails, then so too will its economy. In these precarious circumstances, mistakes made of haste are more easily forgiven if they ultimately preserve the country's fortunes. Washington is sure to make plenty of mistakes by intervening overtly in the Arabian Peninsula. To say nothing of the political capital needs to convince the Congress and the people in favor of another form of adventure. Rest easy knowing that the sacrifices we make now will pay off for the millions of American lives dedicated or decades into the future. Prosperity, after all, comes makes forgiveness an easy choice. But regardless, I think this video has gone long enough. If you have enjoyed this episode consider leaving a like.
subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will beat the Islamic Republic of Iran, beat the Socialist Federation of Iran, Federation, yeah, of Iran, and institute the Democratic Republic of Iran. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.